Clifford Irving was responsible for the biggest literary scam of the 1970s, the fake autobiography of mysterious billionaire Howard Hughes. In the new movie, The Hoax, Richard Gere plays Irving as a desperate, ambitious writer trying to fool the world, starting with his research partner. Lawyers are not spiritual. Presumably this is going to make news. Howard Hughes hasn't spoken to the press in 15 years. What are you so nervous about? You can't think, Dick. No thinking. All I'm saying is, once this gets out, what's going to stop this guy from suing our asses off? Have you heard of Intertel? He has his own private CIA. Ruthless advisors. His advisors don't know anything about the book because he's too paranoid to tell them. And he'll never come out of hiding long enough to denounce me because he's a lunatic hermit. And... I am the spokesperson for the lunatic hermit. So the more outrageous I sound, the more convincing I am. That was sort of the crux of the whole thing. Richard Gere, yes. good morning. <laughs> the more outrageous I am, the more believable I am. I'm the that's, louder that's really and the, the bigger the yeah. lie, right? <laughs> I mean, just you were living in New York at the time. This was a huge story. In I was the just early beginning 70s. as an actor. Uh -huh. And uh, I was 11 at the time in 1971. <laughs> yeah, and, right. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it, was, it was a big deal. People can't really realize that now because Howard Hughes is such a distant figure and there's no one in our world now who correlates to him. He was just such a, a bizarre, extraordinary, powerful creature who was in the beginning of the, the movie business and, and the aviation business and the oil business and these uh, multinational ties that went to the Nixon administration and, yeah. and the Supreme Court. And I mean, it was, it was a lunatic time with a lunatic character. And meanwhile, this not well-known author convinces the world that he has the exclusive autobiography, that they're carrying on conversations. Yeah. How did he do that? How did he pull it off? The highest you, levels you know, of the publishing world. Obviously, people wanted to believe this. And yeah. um, I think he was astonished that it got as far as it did. I think it started as a prank. You know, I didn't talk to him while we were making the movie, and I just spoke to him a couple of weeks ago for the first time. And, he, you know, he needed the money, and he needed the job, he needed all that, but I think it started as a prank, and there, it was a what if. Let's just see. Could we really? Let's throw and it out there. Let's see what happens. And, and people were buying it, so we kept doubling down. Every time he got into a corner, he made it bigger and bigger and bigger. We have the book. It was actually, even though this happened in the early 70s, a limited amount were published in 1999. There's even a preface in here by Howard Hughes, which is so bold, <laughs> <laughs> with the fake signature and everything. It's actually very well written. And it's an interesting thing, because he talks about himself and Clifford in this. And he starts off with the premise of, uh, the, the big question is, why did Howard pick me? <laughs> And he goes into the psychological and emotional reasons of why Howard would pick him, not Norman Mailer, mm -hmm. not Hemingway, not whoever. But from your perspective, I mean, how gratifying was this role? Because this was not was a, a particularly script. easy, easy character script. to play. These movies that are well-written and these characters that are well-written, no matter how outrageous they are, are much easier, really. The ones that are difficult are the, the less outrageous ones. The ones that appear to be the easiest ones are really the most difficult. He was such a liar, so charming, and such a liar on every level with his best friend, his wife, the public. Did you go back and watch those 60 Minutes interviews yeah, that he did? Over and over. Did over you with over. Mike Wallace? Yeah. What did you he, learn about him? Well, I'm looking at them. I'm going, he's obviously lying. <laughs> he's not even a good liar. He's right. so obviously lying. And it was, it was the way he was approaching it. And it wasn't just because he was nervous. You say, well, maybe he was nervous. That's why he was. No, because he, he had rehearsed the story so much that the details were popping out, you know, like, like light bulbs right. breaking. You know, it was. <laughs> Con Man of the Year, Time Magazine. 1971. Are you giving me that, by the way? Do you, I don't do you have want, a copy of this. You don't have a copy no, of this? No, I would like to have this you, copy. You want this? I know this was promised to someone else, but I'm making okay. you give it to me on Excuse camera, me, we so were, I actually get it. We were going to give this we to our there. boss. I know that. Uh, and, and, Is the boss here? He's actually not here. No? All boss, right, man. <laughs> can I have it? I don't have one. Steve Friedman, Hello? sorry. <laughs> we'll get he doesn't you come in copy. in the morning, does no, he? No, he comes no. in at five in the He's afternoon. He's in his office. Hello. <laughs> it's yours, Richard. Thank you very much. Oh, you pressured us into it. There you go. Richard Gere as Clifford Irving. Thank you. So nice to meet you. Congratulations. Thanks. Fabulous performance. Thank you very much. <laughs>